All right, thank you for your comments. And uh, next up, uh, Leah, would you like to unmute yourself? And uh, the floor is yours. Hi, um, I also just want to... Uh-uh, Leah, you're remuted. Hang on. Unmute yourself again for me, Leah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, I just wanted to echo what um, the other folks just said before me. I am also a neighborhood council member for Mid-City Neighborhood Council, but I'm speaking as a private citizen. Um, I think that it's really unfortunate that there wasn't enough time to hear from the community. We have 204 participants right now, and I also wanted to take a moment to uplift downtown Crenshaw, and you know they should have the opportunity too to present and sh share their ideas. As much as it's appreciated that um, the folks came out and presented and shared all this information, a lot of it was a little unnecessary. Um, you know, hearing a lot of things and not hearing from the community that's taking the time to sit through all of this and obviously has been protesting and petitioning and in the streets. And I also just want to make a comment in comparing our community to, um, what was it, Century City, Marina Del Rey, areas that are- Thank you for your time. Really, oh, thanks. We appreciate your comments. And uh, lastly, we have time for one more. Um, uh, and uh, let's see, I'm trying to look for someone new, but I need a name, I can't just go on. Uh, announcements because I can't call on you. All right, uh, we have time for one more. Uh, Africa Town, the floor is yours for the next minute. Uh, hang on, Africa Town. Things are moving around. All right, Africa Town, you have the floor for a minute. Are you there? All right. I'm not Africa Town. I'm yes. like uh, Billion, you're up. Um, sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, can you hit the unmute again? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. This is Billion from the Africa Town Coalition. And again, this shows uh, extreme violations of the Brown Act. Again, if it was about the community, y'all wouldn't be going to these lengths to uh, suppress opposition. Um, as far as Sharif Franklin, first I heard about her was given shady contracts concerning the um, Canada Social Equity Program. And as I have re researched her, it's, it's just continue um, getting over on the community. Um, community Build Inc., who we hear is also a partner in this. We just put out today that the President Robert Salcedo, he and Mark Ridley Thomas back in the late uh, 90s got over with a um, community development bank getting over on the community. So again, they sit up and they talk about unity, they talk about coming together. Why did they not reach out to um, downtown Crenshaw to partner with them to buy this mall? Again, they went and they made a deal exclusively for themselves for the small few of them to get a small percentage um, that this white man is giving out. I'll and Billion, thank you Indiana. so much for your time. We appreciate your comments and thank you for showing up today. All right, now we're going to move to the question and answer portion. Uh, Edmund, if you don't mind, can you close down the, uh, the timer for me? Great, thank you. And we have uh, Kathy uh, Guyton, our secretary, and Avis Gibson, our uh, member at large. And they will be going through the questions and um, asking the questions as they are in the chat from top to bottom. We have about 15 minutes, so we have until 7 p.m. We will get in as many questions as we can from the chat until 7 p.m. And then the meeting will end. But we will get in as many questions and we will ask every question that is in the chat until 7 p.m. All right, thank you. Uh, Kathy or Avis, which one of you are up first? Start. Um, from Jennifer. How much of Capri's original site plan design are you intending to keep in your new design? So, uh, Roland, would you like to take yeah, that? Roland. Uh, and can you unmute yourself for me now, Roland? Yeah. I, I unmuted. Um, this is an open question because we have to listen to the community and we have to reconcile that post-COVID environment. Number one, there's a lot of uncertainty. And to me, as an architect, uncertainty equals flexibility. So there has to be a good amount of flexible space involved. In addition, retail is not what it used to be. There's going to be a lot less, but this retail we will have needs to be special. There's also this opportunity for creative office space. So the uses are shifting. And we need to understand what the community's desires are and what technology has to offer in this new post-COVID 
society. So it's, it's, it's somewhat an open book. We will maintain absolutely the urban design principles, making Crenshaw and Stock spectacular, a really portal statement, and then creating this pedestrian phenomenon. Uh, but after that, we've got a lot of talking, a lot of research, a lot of back and forth. Great, thank you. And thank you for being concise. We're trying to get into as many questions as possible, but also give thorough answers, so we appreciate it. All right, Avis, uh, you're up next. And I think you should be able to unmute yourself. There you go. All right. Sherry, if you'll answer this one, it's regarding Sherry, Roland, and Dolores. You've been working in the Merck Park for over six years and haven't bought a single building. How could you possibly handle the mall if you can't handle the Merck Park Village? So first of all, we're volunteers in the Merck Park Village and we're not there to be the purchaser, to clarify it so you can be informed. We're there to help people do it themselves. So uh, we have worked with different groups. We have shared opportunities for buying and, uh, and assets and we have a plan now to help the community do development, but we're not the developers. We don't make any money. We volunteer our time to do that. And we volunteer our time to help lead, that is it. We are not the owners of anything in the Mert and we don't plan on being, that's not our goal. So you can talk to the people who are working there and who own the property. The Mert is actually over 80% African American owned already, just so you know. Every single building except for the ones that Botash owns, they're African Americans who own the buildings. We advocated that he make those buildings available to culturally centered um, artists and businesses, and that's what he's done. And you can get involved. I can, you can help raise the money. He wants about $5 million for that building on Degner. Go raise the dollars, and we'll be here to help you do it. Wonderful. Thank you, Sherry. Kathy? You're welcome. Well, uh, this is for um, any of the five of you. What is your ownership stake? Um, we don't have we don't have any um, we still have to work that out what we've actually created was an opportunity to do this because first of all the deal has to close so it's it's nothing we can do until the transaction closes later next month at that point we negotiated a six month period time to meet with the community and figure out how do we raise money for investment that's what we've negotiated so we are still working through that. We have to work through that. We have to meet and see who actually has dollars, who's uh, comfortable and educated on investing in a, a project like this. The initial element is over $100 million. So we have to figure that out. We just negotiate. As soon as it closes, we'll hit the ground running and uh, have meetings and talk about how can we raise $100 million? How can we uh, raise as much as possible to be the investor in this project? And we needed to create that wedge in the door to keep the door open so we can figure it out. Because if anybody here has money, you know, like, first of all, put it in a savings and save it for this project. We encourage everybody to do that. That's what we have to do as well. Secondly, if you have real dollars, bring it to the table. The door is open. Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate it. Uh, Avis? Okay, Dolores, why don't you take this one? Who were the top two African-American developers that were part of your bid. I'm sorry, who's up? Dolores is muted, but oh, I- Oh, apologies. Um, Dolores, do you want to unmute yourself? For the sake of time, Sherry, now. go ahead and jump in. Um, so we, um, again, when you're dealing and real estate at this level and people have investors, uh, we don't have permission to release that. We're under NDA, uh, but do know that there, there are only a few. So you can actually look up people and probably figure it out, but we cannot um, give that information. We'll ask them and we'll be glad to disclose it when they allow, but they were two of the top black developers in this country. Thank you. Kathy? Okay. Uh, um so someone is asking for a recap who are the visuals behind live work but this isn't the meeting for that um, yeah. so i'm going to go to the next question um 
This is not a nonprofit. It is a for-profit. How much do you plan to make from this project by working with Live Work? Um, and Delora might want to answer that. That's one of the things that we're we're really trying to convey. Um, first of all, uh, uh, there's no way to even evaluate that for this asset right now. Uh, for us as a part of a community ownership structure, uh, we are not making anything. We're not paid to do anything. We're here to try to uh, create an opportunity, just like we do in many other communities and have done. Um, and ask those kinds of questions, that means we're not really delving in, uh, really understanding, and we're going to do that. We're going to, we can all sit down and go through everything, go through the numbers, go through the programa, and understand the deal, and that will give you an answer. You can actually back into it once you figure out what the pieces are, how much they're going to pay you, how much you're going to spend on renovation, development, cost about $400,000 um, per square foot to build affordable housing right now. We figure it out, and we can... I'm an expert at developing performance. Be glad to work with you to do that. Thank you. And uh, Avis, are you up next? Yes, Roland, why don't you take this one? Who makes the decisions? Asher is certainly not going to let you just play with his money. Uh, sorry, Roland, uh, can you unmute yourself? Well, I, I think you kind of answered the question for yourself. Uh, People who have money, they're the final say. We are a significant influence in what happens in this in this mall. And that's why we keep using this term conduit. What one of the special things about Asher is that we sensed he listens. And we met a lot of developers. And some of them we knew they're not listen, they're gonna do what they want to do. But he, he definitely listens, and we will be at the table, and we will be representing our community's best interests to ensure black and Thank you. Kathy? What percentage of the project will be community-owned? It depends on how much money we raise. I mean, honestly, we, we have to raise capital. We have to raise capital, so... Uh, let's all get together when the deal closes, see how much money we're going to raise, and that'll let us know what that percentage is. It's uh, as if you were buying it, um, it'll back in. There's also ownership of the businesses that are going to be in the mall, which actually is what actually creates um, the uh, viability of a project like this. Um, so we want to encourage that. Um, we've talked to a lot of people who want to create businesses. And we also want to create uh, opportunities to invest in the properties around the mall uh, and then the development projects. We can put teams to invest in the development projects themselves as we do projects already. So that's a question. Again, people focus on those points of understanding the full transaction. And we can all sit down and work through it. Thank you. Davis? You don't have $100 million, Then how much are you putting in? Exactly. So I, why aren't y'all listening to the community? Um, I don't know which questions are coming, but um, I'm sorry, uh, the one from Avis, someone on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we don't, and again, um, uh, we're, we're here to try to explain that um, the project needs to develop all of the funding for the project, and there are many ways we can do it. If, uh, for instance, a community ownership structure. We want to take advantage of the Obama Jobs Act. You can look it up. It's an approved structure through the SEC, and that should enable us to raise capital through what they call a, um, a, a Reg A plus, uh, where you can raise a million dollars. But we have to put that together. Sit down, put it together, uh, invite all our friends and families to put money in, and we can make that happen. And those, uh, please, we want everybody to start to be educated on that. It's one model that we can go through. We can do a private placement. We can all get together and start to say, okay, you're gonna put in this much, you're gonna put in that much, with information. Uh, we can create an opportunity zone fund ourselves. We know a lot of people in our own communities who sell properties. They sell them and then they have to roll it over into an, uh, another property. Well, we can encourage people to roll it over into this project, just as you would do any other development uh, venture. So we'll sit down and we'll go through those structures, but it's, it's like, um, uh, uh, spending time to understand, evaluate, and create the opportunity. If you build affordable housing right now, 
you're spending a lot of time on on packaging the deal, putting agreements, uh, understanding the performa, dealing with the banks. We have to do all of that. It's a lot uh, to do, and we're here to help make that happen. Thank you. Kathy? Why not partner with Downtown Crenshaw where all members of the community from all economic levels can be involved in community ownership? I don't know if Dolores and uh, Roland want to ask, uh, answer this, um, but I will tell you, everybody here, um, we have reached out to Damien. Open. We have tried to help educate uh, him on process because we've actually built projects. We've actually been here hiring people, making things happen, helping black contracts. We do that every day of our lives. We're not just talking about it. We don't have to talk about it. We do it every single day. Um, and for Billy and I invite on the 722 E62nd Street and meet the, um, the developers and the owners and operators of our incubator and talk to the brothers there and understand what community ownership means and what they think about their opportunity to become millionaires. Go talk to them anytime. And what we have to do is pull the, pull together all of us, not just downtown Crenshaw, because it's not just about downtown Crenshaw. It's not. Community build, uh, Ward EDC, um, Vermont Sauce, and there are many organizations in this community. We've reached out and offered to sit down. The answer from Damian Goodman has been no. And ask Dolores and Roland. He's threatened to sue. Yes. And he, he won't sit down. He will not talk. Right. I've talked to people on this phone call. I mean, I'm going to sue. And I've said, tell him to let's sit down. So we want to let you know when Damian's ready to sit down and act like an adult, we're here. Thank you. I just wanted to, to add, um, I think Damien is brilliant, and I would love him yes. to work with us. Can you imagine how great this community could be if we worked together using his gifts, right. our gift. Can you imagine that? Our door is open. Damien, you out there. You know where I am. You know where I am right now, man. Come over here. You come, we come down here all the time. Kick you. So come on. Let's do this. But we're also inviting the other developers. There are plenty of other developers. It is not, any, and it can't just be about what Damien wants. That's not a partnership. That's not a collective. And there, there's real talent that can help lead the process. More than just us. We, we're, we're reaching out to every single black leader in this city. We've done that. He's the only one who will not come to the table. The only one. The only one who thinks there's a conspiracy against him. He's the only one who's threatened to sue everybody. He's the only one who thinks that he's the only one that can make that happen. And, and I'm sorry, that sounds a lot of like the person that we are all dealing with in Washington, D.C. And it's not fair to this community. And right. the community has come together. The downtown Mitchell people need to come to the community. Right. Thank you. Uh, Avis? All right, it is now 7 o'clock. We will end this with one last question. Is the property being considered for mixed usage, retail, restaurants, housing, and much needed convention, community meeting space? Roland? Yes, in, in, a, in a simple answer. Those are all programmatic elements that we will include on this project. Most of it is on the original master plan. Again, as I stated earlier, we need to sit down and start to quantify, uh, understanding what the new market trends are, what the demands are. Absolutely, those components are, are planned to be implemented in this new, and what we call this mall is going to be an experience. It's not going to be just a mall you go to, you drive and go to, it's an experience. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for your questions today. Um, uh, I, I appreciate the presenters being here today to present. Again, I just want to clarify Equa's role in this. Equa brings information to the community. That's what we're here for. We also have a time limit. We're also volunteers. We also have day jobs. Uh, so sometimes we work a nine, ten hour a day, and then we hop on an Equa meeting, and then we hop on a CD8 meeting, and then we hop on a CD10 meeting. This is my third meeting, and I have one more. And many, many, many of the board members do the same. 
because we all love this community. We're all excited about the growth and the positivity in this community. And I am very excited by the passion that everyone is expressing about this development in our community. Uh, Sherry Franklin was kind enough to give her, her, her to give her phone number to everyone, which is wonderful. You also know where to find them, or you can reach out to Equa at outreach at equanbc.org. You can invite them to your own meeting. Yes. You can reach out and you can invite them. This is the meeting that Equa chose to do. This is the time that we allotted for this meeting. We all, as board members, have five other Equa meetings this week. So we were very, very excited that we were able to squeeze you in. This Tuesday, as you know, the negotiation just to get you here is back and forth. But because you are partnering with Live Work um, in, in the possible purchase of this mall, we felt it was extremely important that we be able to give you guys the opportunity to speak to the community and that the community have at least some opportunity to ask questions. I want everyone to know we went through the questions in order and asked as many as we could in the allotted time. And I want to thank everybody for being here. Please join us. If you please, please join Equa. Come on, come on. You see our uh, our website in there? We're at equanpc.org. We meet the first Saturday of every month. This mall is a passion project. Everybody's excited about it. But there are so many other things that we work on as the neighborhood council. And I really want to inspire everyone to come out. Hey, run for an office in the neighborhood council. We welcome it. Come on out. Come to our meetings. Join a committee. Be a part of this. It's not necessary to just try and break it down, be a part of it. We want your opinions. We want your ideas. We want you to join us. I love that we had a, 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 almost 200 people on this meeting today. And so thank you all for taking the time out of your evening to be here and speak so passionately on this project. I want to thank our um, the development group for coming here today and reaching out and being kind enough to uh, offer as much information as possible. It was a great presentation that gave us some information. I know that this is an ongoing conversation, so I'm sure that uh, we will continue to speak, we will continue to learn, we will continue to try to educate the community, and we hope the community will continue to try to educate us. But again, please, please sign up on our website, come to our meetings, find out what Equa Neighborhood Council is all about. And I want to say thank you, everybody, for being here today. Thank you to Avis and Kathy for fielding questions. Thank you, Johnny, for all your help, and uh, Edmund and Denise, who are also on the meeting, uh, helping out, and to all the Equa board members. Thank you guys so much for the hard work that you put in to make this run smoothly. Because trust, there's a lot that happens behind the scenes to try and keep things running smoothly. But I want to thank everyone for being here today. And please stay in touch. And we look forward to you dropping in on more of our meetings in the future. We are at Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.